A Montana man has the oldest DNA native to America, and it alters what we know about our ancestors. Daryl Dusty Crawford, whose Native American Blackfoot name is Lone Bull, looks over his results with fascination. He'd taken a DNA test with an outfit called Cellular Research Institute CRI, and learned much about his heritage. What he doesn't know yet is that the conclusions will also have implications for all Native Americans. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. The immediately astonishing thing about Crawford's test is how far back the scientists at the CRI have traced his genetic history. In fact, the company has said that it's never imagined to delve this far back in time before, and this achievement could force a rethink on the history of humans in the Americas. Crawford lives in Hart Butte, Montana, a city located in the one and a half million acres of the Blackfeet Indian Reservation in the northwest of the state. With a population of more than 17,000, the Blackfeet Nation is one of America's largest Native American tribes. The other Blackfeet reservations are located in Alberta, Canada. We've made the startling assertion that Crawford's DNA test may have a major impact on what we think about the arrival of humans on the American continent. But what precisely do we know on this subject? Well, the best known theory describes a migration of people from the northern territory of what is now Siberia into the land we today know as Alaska. To understand how humans might have migrated from Siberia to Alaska, we have to go back to the time of the last ice age. In fact, what's commonly called the ice age was actually a period of glaciation. There have been five ice ages on our planet's history, and we are currently in one called the Quaternary, which started 2.6 million years ago. Simply put, an ice age is defined as a period when both of Earth's poles are covered in ice, and glaciations are periods when the ice extends across much of the planet, of which there have been 12 in the last 1 million years. The last glaciation peaked around 18,000 years ago and came to an end around 11,700 years ago. And it was during this last glaciation period, around 15,000 years ago, when experts say that humans crossed from Siberia into Alaska. Today, walking that route is an impossibility thanks to the obstacle of the Bering Sea, which separates the two land masses. But because so much of the world's water was locked up as ice back then, sea levels were as much as 400 feet lower. With sea levels so different as to how they are now, it was likely possible to cross from Siberia to Alaska. And it's more than a mere theory. In fact, there is archaeological evidence for an ancient land bridge migration. One example of this comes from a find made by a team led by the University of Alaska's Dr. Ben Potter. Now, Potter and his colleagues discovered the skeletons of two children, both girls. One had been stillborn, the other died not long after birth, and the bodies had been buried beneath a campfire some 11,500 years ago. The location of the excavation was the Upper Sun River, which lies in central Alaska in the Tanana River Basin. Interestingly, scientists were able to extract mitochondrial DNA from the older infant. This particular type of genetic material enables researchers to identify the female ancestry line for an individual, and this sample matched the DNA found in contemporary Native Americans. That strongly suggests a connection between the child found in central Alaska and people who lived and live further south in the Americas. The significance of this find is that the land the site occupies is believed to have been part of the ancient land bridge between Siberia and Alaska. Today, of course, much of what was once dry land is now underwater. Although there's no genetic connection with people in modern Siberia, it's believed that's because settlers spent long enough living near the land bridge after crossing it for genetic diversity to arise but their genes do match those of some Native Americans alive today. Further evidence of humans crossing into the American continent from Siberia came in a study published in May 2020, and the research was led by He Yu of Germany's Max Planck Institute for Science of Human History. The study focused on a single fossilized human tooth, which dates back to the Upper Paleolithic era some 14,000 years ago. It was discovered in southern Siberia near Lake Baikal. Now, the male tooth yielded enough DNA to work with, and the analysis showed the genetic material was a particular mix of DNA 
from Northeast Asia and North Eurasia. That's a match for the genetic material found in many contemporary Native Americans. So this dating pushed back the earliest known DNA of this type from 11,500 to 14,000 years ago. Talking to new scientists in May 2020, you said, it's not a population that moved to America and then just disappeared in the Eurasian continent. She added that in ancient times, this genetic fingerprint extended across Siberia during a time when the population was still closely associating with people from Northeast Asia. Meanwhile, Anders Bergstrom of the Francis Crick Institute in London added his view in The New Scientist. He said, what this and other ancient DNA studies are showing is that to understand the origins of Native American populations, one must study ancient Siberia. Of course, this point adds to the credibility of the land bridge theory. And Bergstrom continued, Lake Baikal appears to have a genetic contact zone for a long time, bringing people together from the west and the east, both early on in the Paleolithic and more recently during the Bronze Age. If Bergstrom's correct, these Siberian people may be the ancestors of today's Native Americans. However, the idea that the first Americans crossed into the continent via that ancient land bridge from Siberia to Alaska is not entirely unchallenged. Writing for National Geographic in June 2018, author and journalist Simon Worrell outlined the alternative theories in a series of questions. Worrell wrote, How did human beings first come to North America? Across the Bering Strait? On foot? Down the Kelp Highway by boat? Across the Atlantic via the polar ice cap? And when did they reach here? 10,000 years ago? 40,000? Or were they always here, as the Navajo and other Native American tribes believe? As you can see, there are many possibilities. Furthermore, in the National Geographic article, Worrell interviewed Craig Childs, who had just published a book on Native American origins, Atlas of a Lost World. And Childs confirms the land bridge theory is the most prominent line of thought. However, he goes on to outline claims that the first people to settle in the Americas had arrived by boat from Europe. That transatlantic theory is supported by the frequent finds of ancient Clovis weapons on America's east coast. Often in the form of arrowheads or spear points, these artifacts bear a striking resemblance to weaponry found in Spain and southern France, Childs explained. This seaborne route would have seen people sailing across the Atlantic in skin-covered vessels and landing in Virginia or Maryland. To add to that, Childs discusses the beliefs of Native Americans themselves. Some natives hold that the first people there came out of the ground. These are stories related to origin and creation stories all over the Americas. Native tribes have clear stories about how they got here, coming out of caves or up through springs and underground sources. Child said that we think of the arrival of the first people as one group braving their way across a land bridge when in fact it was many groups, many different languages and technologies arriving at different times from different directions. So perhaps the truth is that the story of the arrival of humans in the Americas is multifaceted. As we've seen, some Native Americans, such as Daryl Crawford, have turned to DNA testing to learn more about their past. But of course, it's not only them who have caught on to this modern technology. Many people from different backgrounds have turned to DNA testing to unveil truths. In some cases, people have turned to testing to confirm or refute parenthood or other familial links. Please share this story with your friends and family.